Most of the gods in the Hindu pantheon have dual or multiple natures. Uh, most of the gods of the ancient classical Greek and Roman pantheon were the same. They had many different facets, and um, each locality even had their own version of a, a particular god. Um, Hinduism works like that. And Shiva, the god of destruction or completion or whatever, um, or refertilization, sometimes he's referred to, uh, is, of course, quite a contradictory one because he embodies in the Abrahamic view of things good and evil in himself. Is this possible? Um, in the Western tradition, with ideas of identity and non-contradiction, no, it's not possible. It doesn't make sense. Okay, We all know what I think of non-contradiction and identity. These are useful tools, but we shouldn't allow them to become so absolute as to block us from pursuing other avenues, other ways of looking at the world, or the universe, or reality. Um, Shiva, the god of destruction, is... He's got many natures, and one of them is Bhole, Bhole, uh, Shiv Bhole, Bhola Mahadev, uh, Bhole Nath. Um, the Hindi word Bhole means naive or um, easily duped or um, unreflective. In other words, he doesn't really think about what he does. He just does it, and if you do something nice for him, he will automatically give you exactly what you want. Um, Innocent, in other words. The god of destruction is innocent. <laughs> or one of his facets is he is innocent. He's also something of a drunken Bacchus who dances the universe to destruction. How can he be both? Is it possible? Um... Okay, you can always say, though, this is just religious fantasy. And what, what's the point? Who cares? It, it, it's irrelevant. Uh, I would say no. Um, it is relevant, because in my view of things, the, the gods of the Eastern religions are simply, or they can be, simply means of solidifying ideas or concepts in your mind. You put a face onto concepts. You put a face onto tendencies. You put a. You're actually just giving yourself. The Hindu word murti is just something that you fix your mind on. Uh, you don't even have to believe that said God exists. Um, a lot of Shaivites, I think, are pretty. Shaivites are the people who worship or follow a Shiva type path. A lot of them, I think, would say that no, I don't really believe that there's a blue multi armed God up there who is dancing away forever, but it's just a metaphor for the universe itself. The universe itself often contradicts itself. You sort of say, okay, well, there's all kinds of wonderful things, and there's all kinds of horrible things. What is the nature of the universe? Um, is Does it transcend all of these things, or does it include all of these things? Um, Shiva has a destructive, even malignant aspect to him. Uh, he's fierce and even in some views, he's kind of, um, like in Bhairava, he's some, somewhat um, vindictive even. Uh, how can you be that way? And also, Shiva Bhole. Well, how can the universe be so wonderful and so horrible at the same time? Um, in my view of things, Shiva is simply a metaphor for the universe. Um, I like uh, Aldous Huxley's explanation of the Nataraj. I'll see if I can leave a link to that below here. Um, what the heck has this got to do with Emil Charan? Well, <clears throat> I'm reading his works. I'm not going to really... I'm, you know, I'd like to ruminate on it. Um, but one of the things that I find is if you approach pessimistic philosophy with that view, that it's not necessarily wrong, but it's not complete... It's not the full picture. In other words, Shiva is both Bhairava and Bhole. He's both um, vindictive and um, innocent and gullible. He's both. Um, and he, he gives you the benefit of the doubt, but he's also going to chase you down and kill you. <laughs> um, 
you can reconcile those things in your mind, you can actually approach the darker side of reality with a lot more confidence. Because when you have when you have this idea, the Western idea of non-contradiction in your mind, um, if you discover something true, then you automatically believe that it's contra that it's contrary is false. If you've managed to escape from that point of view, or at least loosen its grip on you a bit, you can actually delve pretty deeply into pretty horrible things and pretty depressing things. Um, I'm reading a short history of de decay, and it's a pretty relentless litany of decay and the um, the uh, way that our modern society is all going down the drain. Uh, he wrote that at about you know in the post-war. Europe of the 1940s, and you can see why someone from Romania might think that the world was going to hell on a handcart. Um, Romania did not do well out of the Second World War, and it didn't do well out of the post-war settlement either. Uh, but I, I'm not going to sort of ad hom him and say, oh, it's only because you're Romanian that you did this. Um, definitely not. But what I'm saying is, I won't negate what he's saying, and I won't, I won't even try to contradict it. But is the opposite of what he says also possibly as true as what he says? <laughs> um, I would say it is possible. I would say that not only is it possible, but it's almost certainly the case. Because our, our universe and the realities that we live with are generally contradictory. And we sort of kid ourselves with our gods of non-contradiction and that's what they are if you ask me the identity excluded middle and non-contradiction are gods at least in the way that we use them you do not question these things um, I would say that um, if you can sort of set those gods aside if you can become agnostic or atheistic when it comes to non-contradiction the excluded middle and identity um, many things become possible at that point. A lot of people say, I don't want to go there because it demolishes morality or it demolishes ethics or whatever. And I say, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it just allows you to see them for what they are. Um, Forrest Gump, the wise fool, said, you know something? I think that the world is both. It's good and bad. Um, and all that Emil Choran does is he just illustrates why there are perfectly valid reasons to see reality in that way. Now, I agree with Mr. Charon. There are perfectly valid reasons to see reality that way. Can contradictory reasons, or can reasons that go exactly against what he's saying, be equally valid? Um, in other words, he posits the view that life and reality are extremely negative, um, I can say yes they are. But are they extremely positive as well? Or are they a gazillion, uh, infinite number of gradations between absolutely negative and absolutely positive? That's more along the lines of how I see it. Um, I like the Hindu capacity or the Eastern capacity to deal with paradox and contradiction even far more efficiently and far more courageously I have to say than the West is able to do. Um, I think that the Western way of having a black-white universe leads to efficiency because science works that way. Science works right, wrong, um, logic, etc. Um, but science is just one aspect of reality. <laughs> what about the rest of it? Uh, science is not even an aspect of reality. Science is a tool. Um, is it possible for the universe to be part Bholenath and part Shiv Bhairava or Kalbairo or whatever? Um, is uh, the marriage in heaven and hell the, uh, the most accurate depiction of reality that we have? Um, as I say, I don't even believe in that. And I'm not sure that I subscribe to the idea that the world is just a mixture of good and evil. I would say that it's a mixture of positive and negative and the infinite number of gradations in between. Um, 
So yeah, I can I can read Chiron, and it's not so much that I've immunized myself against him like I implied in the previous uh, or a couple of videos ago with Mithridates, uh, who died old because he immunized himself. Um, you can immunize yourself simply by accepting the fact that that's the way reality is, the equanimity that Buddhism teaches, or that many traditions teach. Um, Sharan has his place, and I'm not going to say otherwise. Um, I don't draw the same conclusions that he does, but I won't try to contradict his conclusions. His conclusions are not my own. He's got his perspective, I have mine. 